Hello everyone. My name is Yelena Bogdan. I am an orthopedic trauma surgeon in New York City. And for this case takeaway, because it's Christmas, I chose to film it in my favorite place in New York, which is my home. Um, you see the tree here behind me and uh, hopefully against this nice background, I'm gonna talk to you about a tibial plateau case, which is more of a proximal tibia fracture case because the metadiaphysis is involved. And that makes it a little bit more uh, difficult than uh, your usual uh, tibial plateau. So we're gonna talk about that today and you'll follow along with me as I talk about the CAT scans and sort of my surgical plan and then the fluoroscopy images. So uh, starting off here, so in the first set of images here, you see a complex comminuted tibial plateau fracture with a metadiaphyseal component. This is a young, healthy patient, uh, so obviously you wanna be treating this operatively. And in addition to your standard set of x-rays and the CT scan, I like to get a 3D CT because it helps me understand what the fracture pattern is like and to decide which fragments I'm going to go after and what order I'm going to go after them in. Now the other thing I'm going to say is that many different options are available to treat this fracture. Some enterprising people may nail it, uh, some people may put a ring fixator, but most people I think here will go with some kind of combination of plating. So as you look at this 3D CT scan, I want you to get a sense of the fracture pattern and to think about the kind of uh, approaches you want to use, what position the patient will be in. So for me, I did all of this from supine, but for those of you that are comfortable with prone approaches, I certainly think there is uh, room for that. Um, and also what kind of order you want to approach these fragments in. So on this CT scan, you see the fragments numbered one through six in red. And this is the order I plan to address them in. So we build fragment one to the shaft, two to one and the shaft, and so on and so forth. There is a fragment posteriorly labeled X, and that was a fragment that did not have articular surface on it. So I didn't think it was as important for reconstruction and getting back there would be all but impossible. So I plan to sort of have an indirect reduction of that um, and uh, bridge it if necessary. So even with a good surgical plan, you have to be prepared to change it uh, according to the circumstances. So in this case, um, fragments one and two went on and got reduced as planned. And you see here my posteromedial plate with very short screws. And I do this routinely in order to avoid sort of getting into the lateral fragments because if they're still unreduced and you put screws into them, then they're going to be impossible to reduce later on. So I do sort of this temporary uh, buttressing sort of uh, uh, fixation so that I can then return later and make my screws longer if I need to. But these are long enough to sort of do what I need them to do. Now fragment number three, I was planning on reducing it and fixing it with a lag screw, but unfortunately it would not hold until the other pieces were fixed. So I left it alone uh, for the moment. So the original plan for fragment number four was to reduce it percutaneously and place an A to P screw to hold it at the joint, but unfortunately there was still a little bit of step off, which you see here on the fluoro. So um, I repositioned my clamps and I made a small incision to open it and to uh, really make sure that I had good control of it. And then I placed the lag screw from anterior to posterior as I had originally planned. And uh, then I replaced it with a different screw that was a little bit closer to the joint because for these articular reduction, you want to be as close to the joint as possible. So in this next fluoro shot, you see the uh, joint, uh, which is labeled in red, and that's the piece I'm going after next. I have booked open the plateau on the lateral side to go after that piece. And then the yellow arrow is pointing to the displacement at fragment X, which is that posterior fragment that I talked about. And that one uh, was the fragment that I wasn't going after. And after a couple of tries, and you see my K-wire attempt there at the joint, and it's still not reduced, I did a trick that I talked about in the OrthoHub uh, Plateau webinar that we did recently. And uh, that is to take that depressed fragment and 
basically get a read off of the most lateral portion of the plateau, so sort of an in-out-in approach. So I take that fragment out, I build it to the lateral side, and you can see an intraoperative picture of it there, and then build the whole back, the whole thing back as a whole. In this next fluoroscopic image, you see the various types of techniques that I also talked about on the webinar that are used to uh, hold this uh, plateau fracture in place, including some clamps, the periarticular clamps, and K-wires. And in one of the cases here, because the little clamp that I have isn't uh, big enough in order to compress so that it holds by itself, so I put a larger clamp onto the handles of the smaller clamp in order to help increase its reach, so to speak. In the next slide, you see the plate finally, finally going on, and usually what I do at that juncture is to sort of suck it down to the bone using proximal and distal cortical screws. So this is another trick I talked about in the Plateau webinar where I use cortical screws at the articular uh, portion um, to just help get that plate down, and then later on I replace it with a locking screw. Here in this fluoroscopic image, you can see some of my rafting screws going in. These were 2.7 screws, so they're relatively small and bendy, and you can maneuver them around all the other points of fixation that I had. And these are the final position of the rafting screws in red, and now I'm going back to my medial side in order to take out some of those temporary screws I put in and put in longer screws. And then these are the final images which show the lag screws in red and in green uh, being added to support some of those uh, cortical uh, fragments. And uh, now you can see the whole reconstruction. One other thing that I would caution is not to end your plates in the same place because that does create a stress riser. So I try to make one plate longer than the other, in which case this was the lateral plate. Thank you very much and Merry Christmas.